All right, so I have been spending more time trying to also do some more load testing on Bun, just because the last video I made, uh, some people have comments saying that, you know, like Node should be able to handle more requests, and what I was seeing on my local box wasn't really that performant. So I wanted to kind of redo that test, redo some different scenarios. And even so, this video is not even about Bun. This video is more about just like, how do you load test stuff, right? So what are some tools that you can use for load testing? And like, what is a potential scenario you can set up to, to successfully load test a framework or a library? Right off the bat, you probably shouldn't load test from your laptop because your testing can be limited by your your latency, your bandwidth. There's a lot of variables that come into play when like trying to actually narrow down a library or framework and make sure you're really stressing that framework versus like, are you being limited by your bandwidth? Are you being limited by your CPU or memory on your computer? Um, so the scenario that I set up, and I don't know if this is a good one, so call me out if you know a better way to do thorough load testing is I set up two different digital ocean droplets, right? So here is the requester. This is the machine that's gonna actually be sending the requests to an API. And then this machine over here is the machine that is going to be accepting the request, right? It is the API. And I'm gonna have Bun running on this and also a simple Node server running on this. We're gonna do some different load testing just to see how Bun performs versus Node. And again, I just wanted to like verify like maybe my last video kind of sucked. And I want to make sure I'm actually doing a thorough uh, load test. So let's look at the code real quick. I want to kind of walk you through what I have. I've tried so many different ways to like do stuff the bun way. Like if you look at the bun um, docs, let's go here. They have a bun.write command. It, but for some reason, every time I run this, it just crashes. Uh, I don't know if maybe the, the version of bun I'm using has an issue with Linux. But these Ubuntu machines, when I run this command, like it just doesn't work. So let me just show you real quick. I have two terminals over here. I have this one, which is the, the API. So if I show you real quick, I have a file called test.js. And all that's trying to do is just write an output.txt file with hello world in it. If I run this, I'll say bun test.txt, or bun test.javascript. I get ebadf. I don't know what that means. Like it's a bad file. Uh, it should have created that file and like wrote hello world to it. But for some reason on Ubuntu, this just doesn't work. And I don't know if like I need to like rename this thing to uh, test.ts instead. But yeah, I don't know if anyone knows like why this their docs just don't work on my Ubuntu box. Let me know. I'm probably doing something wrong. But I've tried a lot of different stuff and I try to read through some of the stuff and like this is this is all beta, so there's a lot of bugs. But anyway, let me show you more about the load testing. So I have two scripts. I have a bun script here, which runs a server on port 8000. And it basically just writes a file to the file system every request. We increment a counter, we make a new log file, and we write that. So what I'm kind of stress testing is bun's ability to write to disk using the, you know, the Node.js equivalent of whatever Bun's FS is, or whatever JavaScript core's FS is, since I can't actually test the Bun not right for some reason. Okay, I'm assuming if I could actually do this right, it would probably be a lot faster. Well, that's one API, um, and the other API I'm gonna be running is a Node API, which, a little bit more code, but basically what this is doing is the exact same thing. Every time we get a request, we write a file, Actually, this I didn't even update this. Let me make sure. Yeah, I, I guess I didn't even. Let me do write file here. I'm gonna go ahead and say files, and then I'll say out dot. I'll say count plus plus dot log. Convert this to a string. As you can see, I've been doing like a bunch of different stuff just to kind of test stuff out and see how it works. So if I take this code and go ahead and you know delete that save it, make sure I can run this. So I'm gonna say run it in production mode. I should be able to hit this and it should be successful. And it should also, um, let me make sure, I'm gonna remove that files directory and I'm gonna make a new files directory. I'm gonna rerun this just so we have a clean slate. And let's list the files here. All right, so that files directory has one file called out.log. Okay, so this is the node version I just ran. I wanna make sure it works fine um, with kind of an equivalent uh, approach to writing files to a, a disk. So let's kind of move over to the load testing part of things. I'm going to run the node one real quick. And I have another terminal where I'm logged into that requester box. I remember I talked about that on DigitalOcean. The requester box is going to make requests to the API. And the reason I'm doing DigitalOcean droplets 
is because they're both in the same data center, hopefully. They're both in the same region. That means that they probably have really, really good network, you know, Ethernet, like the, the bandwidth between the machines should be pretty quick. So that the actual test is actually verifying the framework and library and not bandwidth or latency or any type of CPU. Now I'm using the smallest box possible on both of these. So this test is probably going to be limited by CPU somewhere, but that's the idea. And I mean, if, if you're good at load testing or like doing some types of performance testing on APIs, let me know of a better approach. But what we're going to do is I have two scripts. I have AutoCannon, which is a load testing tool you can use to basically run a bunch of requests against an API endpoint. And this C100 means 100 concurrent uh, threads or requesters basically hitting that endpoint at around the same time, right? So if I run this, it's going to run for like 10 seconds, and then it's going to print out the results here. All right, so let's take a little peek at this uh, performance and see how it does. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and say this is node, and we will compare that to bun in just a second. So let's go back to the other one. I'm going to stop this server. I'm going to go ahead and look at the files directory, make sure there's like a lot of files. So the server worked. It got about 10,000 or maybe like a million requests. I don't know. I got a lot of requests. So let's just go ahead and remove uh, everything that's in the files directory. So we have like a clean slate for the bun test. And let's go ahead and run that bun script. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I want to make sure this works as well. So I'm going to hit this endpoint one time and I'm going to go ahead and look at the files. So that's still working pretty good. Let me just delete that. All right, so let's start the bun server and let's just go ahead and run that exact same auto cannon test against the bun API. So this is the bun performance. Let's see how this works. And here we have some results. So let's go ahead and check those out. And let's copy those in. I'll say bun, paste that in. So the difference between these, I know it's kind of hard to tell. Um, this node load test averaged about 6,000 requests a second and bun averaged about almost close to 11,000. So in this particular scenario where we're testing, writing random files to the file system and taking a bunch of requests, bun is potentially faster. It is about 4,000 or so, nine, five, four or 5,000 requests faster. So kind of want to take back what I said about bun is not that much faster than the node. That's kind of a significantly, uh, quite a significantly different uh, increase in performance. So that's kind of, that's kind of good. So bun's doing pretty good. And then as far as latency, bun is also averaging half the time, right? So in half the time, it's basically able to return a response back. Um, now I wanted to make sure that I also load tested this with other tools too. I tried to use a, Apache benchmark, which has a very similar command where you can say a hundred concurrent requesters and a 10 second time limit. So if I run this, the, the thing that is troubling me, and again, Bun's in beta, so don't think I'm here trying to bash Bun. If I run this, for some reason, Bun just doesn't return the requests. And this just doesn't work with Apache Benchmark. I don't know why. Maybe there's something that Apache Benchmark is looking for, and Bun's just not setting it correctly on a header. So, you know, Apache never thinks it finishes. But you'll see that, like, Apache, after 10 seconds, it just basically, it, it says it can only finish... The compute, completed requests, 130. The average time taken is 20 seconds per request. So you can see that this performance is, is awful. If I do the same exact test with the node, let me go ahead and run the node server on the same port. And if I run that same test, you'll see that it's completing like tens of thousand requests in like a second, right? So, you know, Bun probably has some issue or, you know, Apache benchmark doesn't work properly with uh, Bun, but you can see right here, the average request time was about 27 milliseconds. And I was able to get out about 3,600 requests per second. So I don't know why this request per second is so much lower than the auto cannon. But again, I could be limited by how these testing libraries are kind of written. You know, maybe they have better multi-threading support with auto cannon versus Apache, Apache benchmark. But anyway, I guess my, my thing I'm trying to point out is like Bun just doesn't work with Apache Benchmark. And one thing I did notice is that if you look at what comes back uh, from Bun with a, like a really basic example versus what comes back with Node. First off, to send a simple success message back, Bun is only taking 85 bytes and Node is about double that. And if you look at those two requests, you will see that Node actually has a bunch of additional response headers on it. It has like transfer encoding chunked. 
keep alive, you know, five seconds, connection keep alive, stuff like that. And it has like a date string. So obviously this is going to be a bigger response, even though all it's returning is success. And I kind of wonder if that might also affect the performance because the bigger the payload you're sending back, obviously the longer it's going to take. And if you compare that uh, with Bun, if I go ahead and look at that same request basically and look at the response headers, there's only two here. There's only two response headers, which I think makes the response a little bit smaller. And then status code of HM. I don't really know what the HM stands for. Node says, okay, I've never seen the status code of HM before in my life. So I guess I wanted to point out that like, even if you try to run a really basic node server compared to a really basic bun server, you can't really match them up exactly because for some reason, in order to remove those extra headers in node, you have to run extra function calls, which ultimately slows down how many requests per second you can get. Like writing some extra code to delete date connection and transfer encoding and keep alive uh, ends up slowing down the number of requests per second. So I wish kind of bun had a way to kind of mimic node and had the exact same headers in the same payload size. So we had an accurate representation. But it is what it is. I mean, we're not really stress testing over a couple of bytes, but I do think that those bytes being double in size could potentially affect the uh, response times or the number of requests that you can actually get. So overall, I mean, if you think this setup for testing was pretty good, where you have two droplets all in the same data center kind of talking to each other, uh, maybe you can learn something from this video. Again, I could scale these boxes up and kind of make sure that they're not limited by something, but I don't want to pay money because I'm cheap. So yeah. Um, I will probably keep on looking at Bun every once in a while. I think it has potential. I just, it, it seems like it would be impossible to code anything realistic with it because the moment you try to do something simple, like using their file writer, like even a pin file just doesn't work. Like if you try to run a pin file in Bun, it just crashes. It just doesn't work. Um, so I think there's an open issue for that too. Like if I go to Bun and go to open issues and type in a pin file, like I was trying to do this earlier today and it's there's an open issue saying a pin file and, and a pin file sync are just not working and I was getting kind of a similar error. Um, and then this person is saying you can use this instead. I tried using that, it just doesn't work. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something about uh, how to potentially load test a an API or a framework that the API might be using. Uh, join me Discord if you want to talk more about this or ask me questions. Uh, anyway, have a good day and happy coding.